Hi there, I'm Vincent Boss and I provide dating and self-improvement advice. And in today's podcast, we're going to be discussing Huge Sign, You Can Get Your Ex Back. I provide audio coaching for breakup recovery, trying to get an ex back, attracting someone new, and life coaching. Visit www.dateme.tips for more details. Please check your spam and junk folders if you are expecting an email from me. So now let's get back into today's podcast. And today we are discussing huge sign you can get your ex back. So if you have been dumped and want to try to get your ex back, it can be helpful to look for signs that suggest this could be about to happen. In today's podcast, I'll be discussing two positive elements and then a huge sign that you can get your ex back. So let's get straight into this. And positive element number one is your ex reaches out to you. So when we're considering elements and signs that you can try and get your ex back, there comes nothing initially stronger than the fact that your ex has reached out to you. Now, it's important to remember that there is no 100% guaranteed way to get your ex back. Nothing works 100% of the time and nothing fails 100% of the time. But I genuinely believe that in most instances, if you've been dumped, your strongest position is to never contact your ex again unless they contact you first. Now, this will somewhat depend on your unique circumstances because you might have unique circumstances which don't play into the generalized approach that I have to discuss in my podcasts. But generally speaking, if you've been dumped and you want to try to get your ex back, your strongest position is to never contact your ex again unless they contact you first. So if your ex reaches out to you, this is, of course, a very positive element. This is a big moment within itself because it is the first rung on the ladder. You know, it's the first step towards success. If you don't receive contact from your ex and you are following my generalized approach by implementing my version of the no contact rule, then if you don't have that happen, you're not going to be able to reconnect with your ex. You know, you can't get your ex back if you're not in communication. So if and when you receive this communication, this is a really, really big, huge, you could say, positive element. Now, we're going to be getting into a little bit later what the biggest huge sign is that you can get your ex back, but you can't get to that point until you've crossed off the other points we're going to go through today. And the first of which, like I said, is when your ex reaches out to you. Now, how are they likely to do this? Might they call you? Well, that is a possibility, but I would only suggest this is the middle option, the mediocre chance you could say that they're going to do it this way. I wouldn't say that this is the most likely approach. It's actually the second, the middle option within what I believe is likely. Even less likely than your ex calling you, giving you a telephone call, is them knocking on your door. Is them approaching you in a physical sense. You know, if your ex is going to communicate with you in person as their first approach, you would definitely be in the minority. You know, most people who hear from their ex again, it's very, very unlikely that it's going to be in person. It's very unlikely that your ex is going to knock on your door or wait outside where you work or approach you after seeing you maybe in the street and thinking, okay, this is my moment for us to really start reconnecting. That is the least likely option in my opinion. Now, the middle option, like I said a moment ago, is that they give you a call. You know, they call you on the phone or whatever app, you know, you might be using right now on the computer, on your tablet, whatever it may be. A call is the middle option, but by far the most likely way that your ex is going to reach out to you is via a message. So this might be a text message. It might be a message via a different application. Maybe they're going to be wanting to use some type of app where they can see if you've read their message. You know, that can be very helpful if you're a dumper and you are kind of putting your thoughts and feelings on the line here by reaching out after maybe saying, I don't want to be with you anymore, I don't want to see you anymore. You know, if they then reach out to you, maybe they want to see at least if you're going to read this message. 
and therefore a dumper might select an option where they can see whether you have actually bothered to read this message and whether they can see and double check that they haven't been blocked. You know, often dumpees worry that they have been blocked, but dumpers can worry about this as well. And although they might send out a message, because it is in a way the safest option, you know, there's not going to be any confrontation because the dumpy can read this in their own time. They can respond if they want to. It is a less pressurized approach. And even if a dumpy might bite back in a negative way, it's not going to be face to face. The dumper is not going to hear the dumpy's voice via a text. So it is the safest option. So even though the dumper might use this option because it is the safest, because it is the least pressurized, it doesn't mean that they're not going to want to find out if the dumpy has actually read what they've sent out. You know, that is the problem of a text. If you call somebody, you know if they've answered, you know if you've had a conversation. If you're face to face, you know they've seen you. You know you've had that conversation, you've looked into each other's eyes. If you send a text message, you've got no idea necessarily if they've even read it. Have they just left it unread? Have they blocked you? Have they turned off notifications? So therefore, a dumper is likely to use a method via text that they can check upon to make sure a dumpy has actually received this. So now let's get into point number two and the second point of today's podcast about huge sign you can get your ex back. And point number two is positive element number two. And that is the contact is for an unnecessary reason. So the dumpies receive this contact, like I said, most likely it is going to be via text. Although there is a chance it could be a call, and even less likely, it could be your expert dumper knocking on your door. Either way, you receive contact. Now, you need to be considering, is this necessary contact, or is this unnecessary contact? You know, I like to use examples, which of course, are not likely to be precisely what you experience, but you can tie them in to connect with what you might receive. So, for instance, I always like to suggest, as an example of necessary contact, a dumper reaching out to their dumpy and saying, I've left my work laptop at your house, you know, please, can we arrange so I can get this back? You know, maybe you will send it to me in the mail, maybe I can pick it up, maybe you can drop it off, I need my work laptop. Okay, that would be deemed as necessary contact. Now, that is not an ideal situation for a dumpy to receive. I mean, okay, it's not bad, but it's also not necessarily a sign that you can get your ex back. Your ex but don't present a relationship. They've gone on their own path. They perhaps said they don't want to speak with you anymore, but they've reached out to you and you might be excited about it. And then you find out it's because they need their work laptop. So it's not an actual sign that you can get your ex back because they need their work laptop. Now, it doesn't mean as a dumpy that you can be rude to your ex, that you can shout at them, that you can ignore them. Now, if you decide to do these things, I think your chances of getting your ex back in the future are diminished even further. Even though this isn't necessarily the contact you wanted to receive, you have an opportunity to show you're of stable mind, you're positive, and you're a good person. You know, they need this work laptop. And if you don't allow them to have it then this is going to get them in trouble at work. Do you think that's going to help your cause of getting them back if you refuse them, if you speak badly to them, even if you feel that they don't deserve your respect right now? If you want them back, you should be being reasonable, in my opinion. So, like I said, it's not likely to be precisely the same as your situation, but you can tie it in. Is this contact necessary? Now, the contact a dumpy wants to receive from her ex is unnecessary contact. An example I like to give for this is when your ex for dumper reaches out to you and says, hey, look, I think I left my socks at your house. You know, I know we haven't spoken in five months, but could I have my socks back? Now, if you receive a contact like that, you will realise it's unnecessary. You know, unless your ex's socks are made of gold, why would we want them back? Especially now, all of these months later, why is it relevant? Well, it's not. And this is why we see this as a positive moment if you want to try to get your ex back. Now, your ex, the dumper, might know full well that this is ridiculous, but they can't think of another way to make contact with you. Or alternatively, your ex, the dumper, might not even realise of how silly this sounds. And this might be all coming from their subconscious, a subconscious drive to make contact with you. 
So they almost find a reason, they invent a reason to make contact and have a conversation. If you're a dumpy and you receive unnecessary contact, this is wonderful because they didn't have to do it. And you also can play it in a way where you speak about them regarding what it is they initially contacted you about. But you have the opportunity to grow this further. If, on the other hand, you receive a work laptop style text, unnecessary contact, after you've replied and discussed how you can give them their work laptop back, there's nowhere else for this to go. You know, at this moment, you can do what you can do, but that is that. If you know the contact is unnecessary, your ex the dumper is going to be much more likely to want to engage in further conversation. Now, if you're listening to this and you're quite confused about contact that you've already received or contact that you might receive in the future, then you may want to consider my audio coaching service where me and you can speak one-on-one -on -one about your unique specific situation. Go to my website www.dateme.tips for more information about how I can become your coach and your teammate via my audio coaching service. So now let's get into point number three and the final point of today's podcast about huge sign you can get your ex back. And point number three is the huge sign. And this is the huge sign where you can start to believe and understand that you might be able to get your ex back. You've already received the initial contacts. You've realized the contact was unnecessary. But the huge sign to look out for that you can get your ex back is that the communication feels positive beyond the initial message. So as I've just said to you, if you received unnecessary contact, you have the option of trying to grow this conversation. Now, I always suggest that you need to be back and forth for a little while. You know, during my audio coaching, we might speak specifics. But if this is through text messages, you might be thinking five or six messages. If this is a call, you might be thinking of a certain length of call. You don't want it to be too short. You don't want it to be too long. If this is face to face, you need to be judging the circumstances and the situation for how long you speak face to face. It depends where you are where they've met you, all of these things, you know, remember at this point in time, you were not expecting this contact. So maybe they've knocked on your door. You know, they haven't arranged to meet you. They've surprised you wherever it is by this initial contact. Whatever the situation is, which is likely to be a text, I always suggest you go back and forth for a little while with a communication, whether it's face to face, on a call, or more likely via texting. Whatever the situation, let the communication go back and forth and see how it feels. Feel the vibe. Bear in mind this person dumped you. They dumped you in a way which was unlikely to be positive. You know, during the breakup, it's unlikely you had back and forth positive communication. And maybe you have not had communication since. Perhaps you chased them initially and then you went into no contact. Whatever it was you did, you haven't heard from them in a while. And the last time you were in conversation, it likely wasn't the best. So if you're feeling now that they've reached out to you, it's unnecessary. You go in five or six messages or maybe a bit of a longer call or even maybe a face to face. And it's positive. You're feeling the vibe. You know you're ex better than anybody. You know when they're upset. You know when they're awkward. And more importantly, you know when they're cold. And this is the key here. This is the clue. Is your ex cold still? Because at the time of a breakup, they likely went ice cold. Post breakup, you may have seen them at some point. You may have had an interaction where you tried to chase them. Quite likely, they were ice cold. Are the ice cold now? Has the cold ice thawed? If it has, and the communication feels positive, then this is a huge sign that you can get your ex back. Now, of course, nothing can be guaranteed, but this is an opportunity for you to move from a communication stage to the meeting stage with more confidence that you can one day get back together. If you believe that this podcast has helped you, then please consider buying me a coffee. The link to do so is in the description.